Hello everyone, my name is Charlie Haywood and it's my honor to present Revolutionizing Aviation with Green eVTOLs. I am very thankful to have the opportunity to present eVTOL technology and sustainable aviation to the UN General Assembly this September 2023. So first, what is an eVTOL or an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft? So, eVTOLs are a type of vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL aircraft. Specifically, they're electric powered. And eVTOLs have multiple phases, which are takeoff, landing, and cruise, and they even have the capacity to hover. Specifically, eVTOLs can take off and land vertically without the need of a runway. And these eVTOLs are marketed towards consumer applications with many companies developing proprietary eVTOL designs with both manned and unmanned aircrafts. So first, let's talk a little bit about the categories of eVTOLs. There are multi-rotor, lift and cruise, vectored thrust tilt rotor, and vectored thrust tilt duct eVTOLs. And each of these categories of eVTOLs has a different horizontal or vertical power requirement dependent on the design. And each of these categories has a different merit and trade-off with their respective propulsion systems that have unique applications. Now let's talk about some of the drivers for eVTOL design. They are the designated payload, the specific speed and range for the eVTOL's flight, the noise and consideration for noise pollution, especially for urban applications, and simplicity, where simpler eVTOLs can actually drive down costs through the product's lifespan from maintenance to initial production. Now there's always going to be trade-offs between the different drivers of eVTOL design and permitting different degrees of freedom, where better being better in one of these drivers means being worse in another. Now there are also other considerations apart from these five core drivers of eVTOL design, which include environmental impact, cost, power, efficiency, scalability, and safety, and more. So there are a couple types of propulsion systems commonly used in eVTOLs. There are traditional propellers that are derived from aviation, which can be both stationary and movable. There are ducted fans, and there are subsets of ducted fans in adaptive ducted fans and coaxial ducted fans. There is cyclorotor technology, and there's even Lilium, which is a forefront company in eVTOL design, which has their own proprietary ducted electric vector thrust propulsion system, as well as a multitude of other unique designs from innovative companies across the globe. So first, to start with traditional propellers, one of the biggest benefits in companies using traditional propellers is the easy translation from traditional aviation, as well as the flexibility for vectored thrust. Now, this is not exclusive to traditional propellers, but some designs for eVTOL propulsion utilize vectored thrust, in which the aircraft can adjust the angle of its propulsion system, enabling both greater controllability as well as traditional, oh sorry, transitional flight phases, enabling just one propulsion system to do all of takeoff, landing, and cruising. Now, this technology is also derived from traditional aviation, meaning that it has easy translation. However, there are some drawbacks to traditional propellers. One is their inefficiency, as well as their noise pollution, particularly in comparison to some of the following other types of propulsion systems that have been developed. For example, there are ducted fans, which these ducted fans are designed for efficiency, and this is particularly eliminating the losses found in traditional propellers, which specifically are the blade tip loss and swirl loss. And these are combated by including that duct around the fans. Not only this, the ducted fan also has a reduced noise pollution as a result of its design. However, there are a multitude of disadvantages that come with ducted fans. Most, most importantly, there is a higher power required for a ducted fan, and this is because of higher disc loading. Now, higher disc loading is telling of a rotor's lift thrust efficiency 
meaning that a higher disk load is a lower thrust, uh, lift thrust efficiency. In this case, the added weight of the duct actually increases our disk loading, making it less efficient in thrust efficiency. And this design also includes extra drag. Now, although this creates more thrust because it doesn't have the efficiency of traditional propellers, it is very susceptible of crosswinds due to its bulky design. Now, to improve upon ducted fan technology, adaptive ducted fans were created. Now, adaptive ducted fans designs allow air to be directed in, reaping all of the benefits of the traditional ducted fans and increasing them even more with, by minimizing some of the loss. Now, Zagon Solutions is one of the companies at the forefront of adapted ducted fans, which can apply a deployed and retracted adaptive part of the ducted fan in order to accommodate different phases of flight. So first, when the ducted fan is deployed, it's used during takeoff and landing in which there's maximum air in the duct, as you can see in the top image, which significantly increases the thrust. However, as I mentioned for regular ducted fans, this has some issues in uh, its drag, which means that it's going to be less aerodynamically viable during cruise flight in which most of the flying occurs where you'd want to maximize your efficiency. This is where the retraction comes in, in which it's used in cruise flight, where the retracted, duct, retracted part of the adapted ductive fan is more aerodynamically viable due to the edge section having uh, less drag as well as a lower overall volume. Now there's also the cyclo rotor technology, which is a reintroduction of technology we've actually first seen in 1909 by a company named Cyclotech. And this cyclo rotor technology boasts increased maneuverability, compactness, as well as more forward flight efficiency. However, one of the biggest problems with this cyclo rotor technology is the rotor weight and potential complexity issues due to its unique design, which is making it mostly impractical. However, Cyclotech is making many um, innovations in cyclorotor and eVTOL technology, which can potentially make this one of the viable means of propulsion for the future of the eVTOL industry. Now, there's also ducted electric vector thrust, or DEVT for short, which is a proprietary technology that's been developed by Lilium, a, a big company in the eVTOL sector, which combines ducted fans and the vector thrust I was talking about earlier. Now, this DEVT has improvements in controllability from the vector thrust, as well as the benefit of simplicity and safety in the 36 ducted fans that are used placed on the airfoil, which gives assurance in redundancy, where many of the, uh, the DEVTs can fail, but the aircraft can still operate and safely land. Now there's also an adaptive nozzle shape at the trailing edge and at the downstream end of each jet developed by Lilium, which they claim to increase the thrust by 40% compared to an open blade of the same size. Now pivoting towards energy and sustainability, electric power and addressing some environmental concerns is one of the main focuses of eVTOL technology, hence the electric part of its name. Now, many of the benefits seen in energy and sustainability are visible through something called distributed electric propulsion, which I'll get into a little bit later. However, what's holding eVTOLs back from fully addressing environmental concerns are the lack of advancements in battery technology, as many of these eVTOLs require very high efficiency and high power output from the batteries, which the technology is not keeping up with at the moment. So, specifically in the battery requirements versus current technology, a study was conducted in 2021 to address this exact question. Now, this study focused on five eVTOLs leading at the time, including the Kitty Hawk Heaviside, the Lilium Jet, the Beta Alia 250, the Joey 5-seater, and the Archer Maker. And the study concluded that lithium-ion battery technology in 2021 could only support Archer's Maker one of the five eVTOLs studied. However, it did come to the conclusion 
that there would be a push towards innovation in the battery sector and that many of the uh, requirements in battery technology were within the novel or prototype lithium ion, meaning that with sufficient innovation from um, innovators all around the world in the eVTOL and battery sector, we can very soon come to utilizing eVTOL technology for greener cities. Now, on distributed electric propulsion, the simpler design of electric motors makes it scale irrelevant, allowing designers to put as many um, electric motors as need be. Now, this benefit provides freedom in design, meaning that eVTOLs are not simply constrained to two or four jets like many traditional aircraft are. This means that eVTOLs can be designed to be more aerodynamically viable and beneficial than traditional airplanes, as well as the fact that different designs can be created and innovations can be made to maximize efficiency in different phases of eVTOL flight. Now, energy efficiency was something also studied in the 2021 study. And this study demonstrated that eVTOLs can, in some cases, be more efficient than electric vehicles and internal, and internal combustion engine vehicles. So first, the study predicted that eVTOLs are more efficient than IECVs or internal combustion engine vehicles under full occupancy for ranges lower than 70 miles, as seen on the graph. At the same time, they also conclude, concluded that the eVTOL energy consumption was comparable or lower than that of electric vehicles for ranges over 100 miles, as you can also see from the graph on the side. Now, for a little bit of an industry review, many eVTOL companies from around the globe have different approaches and different ideologies to every aspect of the eVTOL design process. However, I want to focus on four specific eVTOL companies, being Archer Aviation, Opener, Ehung, and Lilium. So first, with Archer Aviation, they've recently secured 215 million in investments from big names in the aviation and eVTOL industry, such as Stellantis, Boeing, and American Airlines. Archer Aviation's Midnight Aircraft has also recently received the FAA's Special Airworthiness Certificate, meaning that their Midnight Aircraft is fully compliant with 100% of the safety requirements of the FAA and imminent flight tests are coming soon. Archer Aviation is also set to make the first eVTOL aircraft delivery in history to a customer with its $142 million DoD contract, which they are planning to deliver the Midnight Aircraft to the U.S. Air Force as the first customer. Archer Aviation is also currently collaborating with WISC and Boeing to advance the Advanced Air Mobility, or AAM, industry, providing a hopeful future for eVTOL technology and green aviation. Next up, Opener, which the Opener Blackfly is pictured here, have recently announced their early access program in which 12 customers from around the world can fly the first ever Opener Blackfly. And even you could apply to go and see if you win the chance at being one of these lucky 12. Now, the Blackfly is a light eVTOL that's been developed since 2011 and operates within the Class G airspace which is for consumer recreation and short distance flights. Now the opener is also compliant with the FAA part 103 ultralight category, meaning that no pilot's license is required to operate the opener Blackfly. The Blackfly also has a unique fixed wing design, which eliminates the need for any tilting propellers or rotating wings, which first has a reduced weight, but also has a co reduced complexity meaning that there are lower points of failure in this aircraft. Not only this, but the opener has many safety features, including a multitude of landing surface options, as well as an amphibious hull for emergency water landings. The Blackfly also includes a full aircraft ballistic parachute system in case of an emergency. Next, Ihang, which is the first company to successfully complete 100% of certification testing for their EH-216S eVTOL aircraft from the Chinese government. 
Now this EH216S is the full first fully autonomous eVTOL with type certification and is the furthest along in its development for a fully autonomous aircraft. After testing in its environment, materials, strength, electronics, software, and the data linked to the ground control station, they're making great progress. Now, Ihang has established 20 operational spots for aerial sightseeing in 18 Chinese cities and has conducted over 9,300 different safety-insured trial flights for low-altitude tourism aerial sightseeing, which the company claims is its focus industry for the EH-216S eVTOL aircraft. Ihang has also expanded their flight footprint to over 14, 14 countries across Asia, Europe, and the Americas and they've accumulated over 39,000 demo and trial flights. Now, eVTOL technology also can harness AI in computer vision and imaging with terrain analysis for smart and automated landings, as well as collision prevention and for safety. It can also use AI for backup system through AI-powered smart analysis of LiDAR and radar data in case of a backup system. It can also be used in pathfinding for urban air mobility, or UAM, one of the biggest application industries for the eVTOL technology, as well as to navigate the complex cityscapes as they're not as well mapped as the streets are. So eVTOLs are very, uh, can utilize AI in smart landings with computer vision. So first, they can use terrain analysis to help an eVTOL determine the safety of a landing surface by itself. Now, this terrain analysis can help reinsure a pilot or passenger decision or even open up the possibility of autonomous landings. Now, the freedom of the eVTOL industry has allowed three different options for the future of automation. First would be an in-cockpit pilot, but there's also the opportunity for a virtual pilot being a pilot from outside of the cockpit or even a fully autonomous eVTOL. In any of these three circumstances, smart landings with computer vision and utilizing terrain analysis can both back up a pilot being in the cockpit or not, uh, their decision with uh, a landing surface, as well as being able to determine the safety of a landing surface by itself. Now this terrain analysis and smart landing also has other applications to different fields of eVTOL's applications, including emergency services and search and rescue operations, in which um, being mindful of hazardous environments and situations is of utmost importance. Now all of this terrain analysis is achieved via semantic segmentation, which takes uh, the pixels from a visual input and categorizes them by and then will assign a meaningful value and give it meaningful information, which can then be trained via reinforcement learning to, um, to train the AI model and the eVTOL on which landing surfaces are safe and not. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation on eVTOLs and sustainable aviation, and I hope this has inspired you to become excited about the future of the field and technology. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the skies tomorrow.